I'm here to do business. If you don't like that, then I'll take off, all right? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the actors that definitely lacked in their craft in the 90s and beyond. Let's be honest. Looky, 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 and cat's black bookie. Huh? Number 10, Carrot Top. A movie with a poster featuring prop comic Carrot Top surfing through an office can't be that bad, can it? Yes, yes it can. Tennis, anyone? You're wearing a skirt. You must admit I've got the legs to pull it off. Carrot Top stars as an inventor named Edison. Get it? Heh <laughs> heh whose inventions end up landing him a position at a large invention corporation. Oh, and he's also a surfer. Get it? Chairman of the board? All of this is clearly comedy gold. Ah, don't scramble it all in one place. Have a go, my buddy. However, the point is, no one asked for Carrot Top to embark on a short-lived acting career, nor did anyone ask for chairman of the board. Also, is it in any way believable that Top would romantically score Courtney Thorne Smith? No. No, it is not. An old-fashioned sleepover, a little breakfast burritos in the a.m. What do you say, 8 o'clock? Oh, hell has a better chance of freezing over. <laughs> Number 9, Tom Arnold. Oh no, the truck. It's gone. I've lost it. Now it could be anywhere. One actor who just never really goes away is Tom Arnold. He began as a writer on the original Roseanne sitcom, then wrote himself into the show, and unfortunately, never looked back. Nancy's driving me crazy, Dan. All couples argue, Arnie. It's different, though. When we were dating, the only fight we ever had was who drives and who moons. We wish he had. Despite his lack of acting chops, Arnold's filmography is extensive, with around 20 movie credits to his name in the 90s alone. The most recognizable is 1994's True Lies, although it's tough to really gauge his talents alongside classically trained thespian Arnold Schwarzenegger. Stop cheering me up! Tom Arnold graced the big screen with his presence in such classics as 1996's The Stupids and 1998's National Lampoon's Golf Punks, which we all remember fondly, right? Please hold your applause. Number 8, Elizabeth Berkley. I'm drinking coffee to stay awake. I've been up half the night studying for geometry and I still don't get it. The role of Jesse Spano in Saved by the Bell is what Elizabeth Berkley is best known for, yet we can all agree that the show did not require superior acting talents. Jesse's caffeine pill breakdown wasn't exactly the Emmy clip they might have envisioned. You think, kid? I'm so excited! I'm so excited! I'm so <laughs> scared! However, Berkeley finds herself on our list due to the box office disaster that was Showgirls. She played the lead role of Nomi Malone and showed us parts that Jesse wouldn't dream of exposing. I like having them in a nice dress or a tight top. You like to show him off. The film was harshly panned, as was Berkeley's performance. Her subsequent career resulted in guest appearances and minor roles, as well as a Hallmark Channel movie called Lucky Christmas, the latter channel we could call a sort of graveyard for former sitcom actors. Number 7, Madonna. From her first 1983 album release to present day, it feels like Madonna has just always been around. We're not denying her musical talents, nor are we overlooking the commercial successes of A League of Their Own and Evita. Argentina, with no sign of a government able to give us the things we deserve. We are, however, saying that acting is perhaps just not her thing. She appeared in several films in the 90s, and though some were decent entertainment, none really gained Madonna critical acclaim for her acting. Answer the question, Ms. Carlson. Succinctly, please. I never hurt him. Did you humiliate him? I never humiliated him either. He picked the games. It's no wonder she retired from acting after 2002. The Guardian refers to her Razzie-winning performance in Body of Evidence as flat as a cycling holiday in the Low Countries. I felt betrayed. I couldn't handle it, so I left. Madonna's 90s roles were more reliant on her reputation as a sex symbol than on any actual acting talent. Number 6, Quentin Tarantino. Hence, like a virgin. Some people should just stay behind the camera. Quentin Tarantino is a great director and screenwriter, best known for his stylized violent sequences. He's been acting for longer than directing, if you can believe that. Did you know he had a small role on The Golden Girls in 1988? Let's 
focus on the 90s, however. Directing himself in Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction, Tarantino repeatedly found himself in the presence of superior actors who could make his over-the-top dialogue sound natural. Coming out of Tarantino's mouth, though, it sounds like an actor reading from a script. I buy the gourmet expensive stuff because when I drink it, I want to taste it. But you know what's on my mind right now? It ain't the coffee in my kitchen. Tarantino's forced acting almost has a grindhouse feel to it, which might have been the point the more we think about it. Bad acting is still bad acting, however. Number 5. Jean-Claude Van Damme Now take your big stick and your boyfriend and find the best to catch. If we say Academy Award, which face comes to mind? Is it Jean-Claude Van Damme? Oh yes, I can. Just take the hostages out. If I'm not topside in 15 minutes, evacuate without me. No. Van Damme is from the select group of quote-unquote actors who rely entirely on their other talents, in this case, martial arts. He is a master of mainly Shotokan karate and kickboxing, among other accolades. He appeared in almost 20 films throughout the 1990s, most of which feature him making the exact same threatening face on their posters. All of them rely on showcasing fight scenes without wasting time on pesky dramatic acting. It's really all fight-fight, wooden acting, fight-fight. That awesome dance scene is from the 80s, by the way, so there are arguably no redeeming qualities to his 90s work. Number 4, Pauly Shore. Another name synonymous with Razzie Award is Pauly Shore, whose acting career is, slash, was, definitely a glitch in the Matrix. His on-screen debut was as an MTV VJ, which is arguably the most fitting position for Mr. Shore. Though he had previously done some bit parts in a few productions, his first, somewhat successful feature film was 1994's Encino Man. A Mysterium bull from the Mysterium era. Prehistoric artifacts for 500, Alex. Don't you ever watch Jeopardy? The thing is, early on in his showbiz career, Shore created a character for his stand-up routines called The Weasel, basically a surfer dude with a likely penchant for herbal remedies. <laughs> My name's Polly Shore, and I'm from California. So I'm bumping into a lot of, like, Vinny Sausage pizza heads out here, and they're edged. Like, dude, chill, bro, it's just the Weasel. He never let this go, playing the same character in a number of 1990s failed productions, such as Biodome, Son-in-Law, and Jury Duty. Guilty. Ray, this is guilty. Let me think, what do you guys think this one is? Mmm, this is guilty too. Don't watch them. Save your brain, buddy. Number 3, Shaquille O'Neal. Remember that movie with Sinbad as a genie called Shazam in the 90s? Well, it didn't exist. But Kazam starring Shaquille O'Neal did exist, unfortunately. Hang on, I'm contagious, outrageous, spontaneous, you can't contain this! I am Kazam! This was because in the 90s, some athletes became so popular that we thought they could star in movies and it would be great. It was not. There's a reason Shaq's filmography boasts many himself entries in the cast lineup. Wow, you're a genie too. Should have seen us last night in Malik's limo, just chilling. The entire narrative can be summed up as such. Kazam the genie emerges from a boombox. Yes, a boombox. And helps little Max with his daddy issues. Shaq is exactly how you would expect him to be as a genie. He's Shaq. Oh, and he raps. It's also bad. And when, when the, the magic, magic is over, we ain't men, we genie! Almost as bad as his foray into superheroes, Steel. Number two, Sofia Coppola. Who's your father? I'll give you a hint. He's Italian. Here's an example of nepotism at work. Sofia Coppola has definitely made a name for herself as a writer, director, and producer of major motion pictures. Her start in the business, however, was thanks to her parents, Eleanor and Francis Ford Coppola. Sofia first appeared on screen in 1972's The Godfather as an infant, which she played perfectly. After a handful of smaller roles, her father cast her as Mary Corleone in 1990's The Godfather Part Three. I remember them shooting at her house when I was little. And now Neri came one time with other bodyguards and just took me and Tony away. Critics focused heavily on her lackluster performance, with at least one calling her presence a near-fatal flaw. The role was originally set to go to Winona Ryder, but she dropped out at the last minute, prompting the emergency casting. You gotta understand, Mary. You gotta understand. I'll always love you. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications.
number one, Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal is an interesting character. His actual history is difficult to track down, as he is reportedly a liar. For example, claiming he trained under Aikido master Morie Ushiba when Ushiba died years before Seagal moved to Japan. But one thing is for sure, he's not a trained actor. My friend, you know, he's a little bit country. I'm a little bit rock and roll. What does that mean? Just an expression. Seagal did star in some commercial successes, such as 1992's Under Siege. Despite being considered an up-and-coming action star at the time, Seagal's career was primarily directed video from 1998 on. I also suggest you figure out something to tell your daughter about who I am and why you're going with me here. Okay. Goodbye. That, kids, is when movies don't even play in movie theaters. He guest hosted SNL in 1991 and has been called the worst host in the history of the show. His wooden performances, subpar fighting skills, and difficult personality are notorious. His acting, not so much. Sometimes, three's not a crowd. The way I look at it, we need each other. Who do you think is the worst actor of the 90s, or even all time? Let us know in the comments. No difference between you and anybody. Oh yeah? Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.